Hey everybody, it's Never, and I'm here in patch 7.0, getting ready for Legion. So far, I've been really happy with this patch, but there are a few problems with it, and I'm going to go over the problems and how you can fix it really quickly. First of all, though, I want to talk about what's going on here. There are a lot of people that are killing themselves on purpose, and then people are rezzing them. It's because there's these doomsayers here, and what they do is they hand out these pamphlets. If you collect all the pamphlets, you get a feat of strength. It's pretty cool, but they're random. And when you get one, you get a 15 minute invisible debuff that prevents you from getting another one. Unless you die. Then the debuff is removed, and so people are taking their gear off, putting it in their bank, and then dying over and over again, so that they can get very quick, unlimited tries at getting all of these things. So that's what's going on there. It's kind of funny, really. Uh, Blizzard's getting people to kill themselves. In-game. In-game. Um, so... Some of the problems with patch 7.0 are things that Blizzard has taken away. Alright, so the first thing that Blizzard took away are some of the glyphs that give you some fun little class abilities. Specifically for druids, we had a little glyph called Charm Woodland Creature, and uh, one that turned us into a separate stag form, and some other stuff like that. And other classes have, have fun little things like that. Well, those glyphs actually still exist. They're just special spell tomes right now. And so you can go for druids over to Moonglade, and you can get them from a vendor, and there's a list right here of all the different places that you need to go for each class to get the glyphs that have been discovered so far provided by this reddit user and you can see now that because i've gone there i have charm woodland creature and this dung beetle is now mind controlled to be my friend so that's pretty great uh, another problem is we no longer have access to the use talents switch in macros but not to fear there is a way to work around that so i'm just going to bring up my macros right here and find one of these down here. This is the one I use to switch to balance spec. It equips a set of gear that I use for playing balance, and then it sets up a specialization. And the way this works is it's just a run command, and it sets specialization. You can see it right there. And then in parentheses, you have the number one, and that number corresponds to the number of specs you have. So one, two, three, four, real simple. You just put in the number you want and it'll load that specialization when you run that macro. Real simple, just make sure the words set and specialization are all one word and the S's are capitalized. The next thing that we can get back is our character stats by using an add-on called Deja Character Stats, which brings back all of this stuff. It's configurable and it works just great. It's like they never left. I don't know why those had to be taken out, but now we can get them back. It's real simple. The next problem is a random mount macro. We used to have macros that would click the random mount button for us, but that doesn't work anymore. And now you could do something like this, and it would just cast any random mount from your entire spellbook, which might be useful. This is a really big thing. Uh, or you can just do what I do, which is using a little add-on called Opi. Opi lets you set up these custom rings that have a bunch of uh, buttons or abilities or commands in them. And you can just add stuff to them real simply. You'll notice if you go under mounts, summon random favorite mount is right here at the top. And you can see that I have that right there and it'll summon a mount from my favorites list. Pretty cool. So another thing you're gonna wanna do is fix all of your broken add-ons as soon as possible. I do this using the Curse Client. It's free and very easy to use. It gives you one-click installation, and more importantly, it lets you specify something that you really need. So if you go here to Tools and Options, and you go to Games and Add-ons, and I don't use this for Skyrim, I don't, um, and you go to World of Warcraft, then you can choose Release Preference Alpha. That'll give you the very earliest builds that are usually the compatible ones with brand new patches. You hit Reset All, and it will switch all your add-ons to use the Alpha version. So, so then when you update it, you will see Alpha versions that you can update to. Sometimes these are broken, but they're usually a whole lot better than the release versions that aren't fully tested and haven't been updated yet. It's a bit of a gamble, but I find that it tends to pay off when new major patch releases happen. Uh, the next thing is how do glyphs work? Real simple. You have the glyphs, you click on them, and they bring up uh, this, and you add them to the specific spell. And you'll know they're added to a spell when they have a little pink arrow in the corner that shows they have a glyph. To get rid of them, you just get vanishing powder from all sorts of different regular vendors, and you can remove it the same way that you add it. It's that simple. Glyphs are easy now. And you can use different glyphs per spec. So if you have a cosmetic glyph that you like, you can have it on some specs, but not on others. It's pretty great. But here's the big, big thing. Blizzard took away the max camera distance from us. And 
there is a way to get around that, sort of. So the reason that most of us liked Max Camera Distance isn't because it was far away, it's because it allowed us to see things. And so Dynamic Cam has come to the rescue. There is a Reddit user that posted today a really awesome setting that gets around this very nicely. What I'm going to do is show you how to set it up and then I'm going to show you the difference. So you come in here with Dynamic Cam and uh, you turn on Advanced Options. And then under Situations, you want to go through each one of these in the drop down and disable them. I leave the mounted one on because I want my view to be a little different when I'm mounted, but all the others should be disabled so that it doesn't change on you. And so then once that's there, you come here and you, this is the important setting, Base Field of View Pad to 0.01. Now, I'm going to turn this off and show you what it looks like. This will be very familiar. Here is max zoom out distance. And if I wanted to look at a boss, let's say that the war chief's house right here is a boss. Well, I can't even see the top of it. Even if I go with this pitch up thing, I mean, I can't raid like this. This is ridiculous. No good at all. But I can still only zoom out this far. But when I turn on this option in Dynamic Cam, you'll watch what it does. It shifts my point of view so my character is nearer the bottom of the screen. And so then, from the same point right here, I can look up and see the whole thing. Now my character is way down there, but when you're honestly, when you're fighting something, you don't have to see your character all that well. You can, and this might prompt people to use some slightly different UI layout, but you can see that it works really well for keeping your eye on the action, even if you can't zoom out that far. And you can set dynamic cam up so that its pitch adjustment as you scroll in still keeps your character in view and keeps it in a nice place. So this has fixed the whole camera issue for me entirely. And I actually like this better than zooming out because I can still see stuff uh, up close without it being really tiny on my screen, but I get the full view of everything. So to give you another comparison, here's this house and I can see it and I can see my character. Even if I zoom in further, I can see it quite well. This is halfway zoomed in. But if I go and turn that option off, look at that. Look how much wasted space there is down here by my feet. Now sometimes that might be kind of important if you need to see what's behind you for some reason. But even so, just point your camera down a little bit and you can see what's behind you just as well. Or you can see what's in front of you. I honestly think that Blizzard should do something like this for the default camera view. So anyway, that's a quick little crash course on how to fix some of the stuff that was taken away from us in patch 7.0. I hope this has been helpful to you. If you know any other tricks that would help everyone, please leave them in a comment below so that we've got a nice easy place to get to to let everyone know about it. And share these with your friends, show them the video so that we can all get past these annoying things and get on to doing the important stuff like taking all of our clothes off and jumping off of this building to die over and over again. Because that's what we're all here for. Okay, thanks, bye. <laughs>